Have you ever considered just how much of an impact stress can have, not only on our personal well-being, but also on our relationships and interpersonal interactions? In the month of April, a national campaign brings stress awareness to the forefront, especially to highlight the negative impact of stress. Considering the fast-paced life we all are confronted with daily, I believe many of us resonate with this topic. Unfortunately, many a times we are so consumed within our stress to even realize we are stressed. Sadly, there are negative consequences of our failure to address these experiences. For the next few minutes, I will briefly highlight some of these negative impacts, especially on our social interactions, and a few considerations of ways to tackle or address these experiences. Hi, I'm Dr. Francisca Osage, and thank you for joining me on Francisca on Health Matters. Now, what is stress? I will take the WHO definition. Stress can be defined as a state of worry or mental tension caused by a difficult situation. It goes on to say, stress is a natural human response that prompts us to address challenges and threats in our lives. As humans, we will continually undergo some forms or level of stress brought about by different stressors. The body's initial responses to these stressors are physiological. A typical depiction of this is the fight or flight response to the sighting of a tiger. In this scenario, the stressor, that is the sighting of a tiger, triggers a physiological response which activates a pathway involving our brain and adrenals which are located on top of the kidney. With the subsequent release of hormones, notably epinephrine or adrenaline and cortisol, these lead to changes which will accommodate the body's initial response such as increases in oxygen delivery to the body, increase in heart rate, increased blood delivery to skeletal muscles. There's also the effects of cortisol which for most part increases blood glucose levels and also produces an anti-inflammatory effect. However, these responses were designed to last for brief periods of encounter of a stressor. In our modern days, stressors come in various forms from trying to meet a deadline, to hosting a big event, studying for a test, preparing to give a speech. Really, the stress response is meant to serve a good purpose that is essentially for survival, be it performance of duty or self-protection. Ideally, these responses aren't meant to be prolonged. However, should we experience a sad or long-enduring event such as loss, grief, um, conflict in relationships, financial difficulty, these can trigger a prolonged period of stress, otherwise called chronic stress. The sustained physiological response to these stressors can cause physical, emotional, and mental harm. Here is a list of few possible effects of chronic stress. From physical, there could be weight changes such as weight gain, skin changes from dry skin to development of hyperpigmented or darkened spots, there's also the development of decreased cognition, anxiety, depression, sleep problems, especially insomnia. On the cardiovascular system, there could be development of high blood pressure. On digestion, there could be development of heartburns, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation. On the muscular skeletal system, there's the development of pain, tightness or soreness of muscle, risk to brittle bones and osteoporosis development. There's low sex drive, erectile dysfunction, and other hormonal balances experienced in the reproductive system. There's the susceptibility to infections and different inflammatory conditions involving different systems of the body there could emerge several interpersonal and social consequences of these effects, some of which are, there's a difficulty with staying focused on tasks. This could be due to lack of sleep, leading to fatigue. Possible negative outcomes of this can lead to job insecurities, financial mismanagement, missed opportunities. For students, it could mean failing tests. There's a development of irritability, 
and this could arise from the general sense of inadequacy. This can be accompanied by frustration and anger. This has negative impacts on relationships, especially relationships with family, friends, colleagues with common interests, such as at work. There could also be missed opportunities to make or form more meaningful friendships and ties. Thus, challenges with presenting a positive personality, risking the projection of low self-confidence. This could result from a sense of having little or no control of a situation or situations, especially when our perceived sense of failure causes us to question our general capacity to handle other issues, hence the development of a low level of confidence. There's also the risk of being forgetful and distracted. This can also be explained from the angle of a lack of focus. There is a tendency to focus on the stressor at the expense of other significant aspects of our livelihood. And this could impact our relationships with family, friends, and other social relationships. Being overly preoccupied with thoughts of the stressor or related events can lead to feelings of mental exhaustion and burnout. This experience can lead to neglect of personal health and hygiene. Again, this can lead to losing great opportunities or forging great relationships and ties. Chronic stress, not managed over time, can lead to depression and anxiety, and this can further compound the problem of stress, leading to a sense of abandonment and isolation, deterioration of physical and mental health. Now, having identified these issues, let's consider some possible solutions. First of all, there is the importance of recognizing our experiencing of stress, especially as there could be situations of being ignorant or in denial of these experiences. It is important to have scheduled exercises, such as stretching exercises or workouts, or simply taking walks. There's the practices of other relaxation techniques and practices of mindfulness that has been shown to be very helpful. There is talk therapy, seeking professional counseling, or even talking to a close friend do not isolate oneself as this could easily lead to depression. Also, do not self-medicate. Do not turn to recreational drugs or alcohol. These lead to worse health outcomes. And finally, take advantage of communities of persons with common interests or similar experiences. These communities offer support, empathy, and encouragement. When faced with extreme stressful situations, do seek professional help and obtain the necessary resources that will help and guide with walking through the difficult situation. I do hope with these tips, we can cultivate healthy habits to avoid stress. And when faced with stress, we can adopt healthy changes. Again, I hope you found this informative and educative. And if you've had, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.